Uh, so this truck was just dropped off to us for what uh, drove here for what they said was a possible blown head gasket. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I believe they were getting coolant in there somewhere. Yep, yep. Okay. Let's go ahead. Yeah, there's nothing in there anyway. Go ahead and start it. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely needs a motor. Yeah, I'm gonna say after all that, it'd probably be cheaper and easier just to find another TBI 350 and throw it in here. How cheap we can get one of these engines versus the amount of time and labor to go through it. Oh, it ain't worth fixing it unless you put another motor in it. I mean, did you see how much milk was in the antifreeze? Think about all the bearings that's been washed. Yeah, it's every bearing in the motor. It needs to come out and get a rebuild at this point. Well, it, I mean, he drove it here with a, and he had concerns of it being a. Uh, on top He's of been driving it too. Yeah, <laughs> with no coolant in it and blown head gaskets. So, add this to the list of vehicles here to get an engine right now. That list is starting to climb. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yay. Notice the lights are falling off my Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> damn this thing was cherry how dare they well i just went to start working on the ford here i had the hood propped up went to go lean under here because this thing's a no start and we have a reason to believe it's uh jump time and as you can see the hood prop rod kind of just did what it wanted to went into the fender and i got smoked in the arm and the back of the head by the hood on this thing so I think it's going to sit for a little bit, and I'm going to go work on something else and let it think about what it's done. All right, so we're going to see if this thing has spark. You want to go ahead and crank it, Chris? Yep. No spark. Ready? Yep. Nope. Try to start it. I'm not worried about the wasp in the door. There's bigger problems. That's a great sounding diesel. Yeah, I saw what I thought was flakes of aluminum on the spark plug when I pulled the spark plug out of number four, and I think I figured out where the aluminum's coming from. Yeah. But it's a great sounding little diesel. Hmm. Sounds like a tractor. Yeah. I don't think a Focus is supposed to do that. All right, well I just ran out to go get lunch for everybody at the shop, and uh, found out from dad that one of you guys had saw some of my video being posted by another channel. Um, I didn't give permission for anyone to use my videos. No one ever talked to me about it. They just cut it and used it. So I appreciate whoever let Bus Grease Monkey know about that. I went ahead and filed a copyright claim on YouTube for it. So we're going to have to see what happens with that. But yeah, I'm not all that thrilled about it. Hopefully, YouTube will get it taken care of and either have that video taken down or at least remove the entire section where they're using my copyrighted content in it. So 
so the next one in here is uh, an 800. So this thing's got a bad wheel bearing in it. The CV is pretty well destroyed. But the reason that that CV is destroyed is because if you can see in there, those bolts are on the front diff. They should be down here. It's ripped the front diff out of the frame. So we get to unbolt the diff, weld a plate in place where it's going to mount to, reinforce it, remount the diff, and then we'll do the CV on it and the wheel bearings and all that. This is out of the same collection as that bouncer that we just finished up. Same owner. He's got quite a few of these things. So, yeah, it's ten side by side. So, I think right now, since it's beginning of season, we're gonna start rotating them all through and get all of them fixed up for him. At least all the ones that need repairs this year. So I'm doing a quick tune-up out in the parking lot on this PT Cruiser, just getting plugs and wires. And when you look down the top of this, you can kind of see that these two center ones are right in the way of this manifold. And uh, I ended up finding out that if you just take a wobble extension and a regular spark plug socket, you got to be careful getting it down in there and back out. But you can get them out with it without having to take the upper intake off or anything like that. So if any of you guys are doing one of these later. So just a little hint that I did try and it will work. It's, it's kind of tight getting back in here around this rib on the intake. But if you clock the plug socket right, you can get it down in there and get the wobble extension on it. So, that might help someone out later. All right, I just got the call that we can go out and do that service call on the uh, skid steer. So, we're gonna head into Plainfield. It is at uh, one of the guys that works for the company's house. He dropped it off there for me. So I'm gonna go over there and get that thing serviced real quick and then uh, probably head home for the day. Doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad though. Hydraulic filter and the fuel filter is sitting right there, air filter's right above it. And got a drain tube coming out right here for the oil. Nope, oh, oil filter sitting right back in there too. So other than the oil filter, the hydraulic filter could probably gonna make a little bit of a mess. Probably will have the fuel filter too, but that's not a huge deal. We'll get some uh, towels and put them down in there. This should be a real quick and easy service. The thing about these it takes the longest is getting the oil out of them. So usually on a piece of equipment like these, you don't have a drain plug, you just got a valve on them, and then a hose that comes out. But I'll get a drain pan out here and you'll see when I start draining it. I always wanna usually make sure there's not a bunch of dirt and stuff packed in here because it usually ends up with it. But it's not very quick draining, so the first thing I always do is get this going, and then I kinda of work on everything else over here. Well, this is going because this is gonna take a little bit. So I've got that valve opened all the way up there, and that's as fast as the oil drains. So, when you're working on equipment, like I said, anytime you're doing a service, I always just let it start draining while I do the rest. So now I'll go get my filter wrenches and everything and start doing the filters on it because it's going to take a little bit to get all that oil out of here. All right, so this is why on every service we do new air filters. These things just get so packed full of dirt and I really don't care to blow them out. So. We go ahead and every time we service this thing, it gets new air filters. I mean, for the couple dollars it costs, it's worth it. Hmm. It's that easy to change, and we might as well do it. We got all the filters replaced in here. A little couple of drips in there, but not too bad. I usually put shop towels and stuff down when I do it. So, fuel filters on, it's primed. Hydraulic filter is on, it's primed. Oil filter is on, can't prime that because it's on its side. And air filters are changed and we're still draining oil. We're almost done, but not quite. So we're gonna let that finish draining, and then we'll start filling it back up. I've got more hydraulic fluid to top it off if I need to. Once we run it, we're gonna check that. And then I'm gonna take the filters home, and I don't have my filter cutter with me on the service truck, but I'll put these in plastic bags after they finish draining here. And then on any heavy equipment, especially on their annual services, I'll always go through and cut the filters apart, hydraulic filter, oil filter, stuff like that, just to make sure that I don't see anything in there that's causing concern. It's better to get on top of it now than when the piece of equipment no longer runs. So just let it drain here for a minute more and then we'll get it filled back up. All right, so we've ran the piece of equipment. I've gone back, I've checked the oil on it, topped it up, made sure that our hydraulic fluid was full after I ran the hydraulics on it. The one thing I noticed when I was doing the service is that our reservoir here 
it's pretty much out of coolant. Now I did open the top and make sure that the radiator's full. It was showing on the sight glass and I could see through the cap, but that got me to looking at the cooling system a little closer. And if you can see right here, that's coolant. So we're leaking, looks like around that hose. So, I'm go, that's actually kind of loose. I'm gonna go grab a socket real quick and see if that'll tighten up any. And uh, if not, we'll see if I get a new hose clamp for him and get some coolant to top that up. Right, so I took a 516 real quick and tighten that up. Stop moving around now. So I went ahead and sprayed it off with brake clean. I just checked and I don't have any of the heavy duty uh, diesel coolant on my truck with me right now. So I'm gonna call the customer real quick, let them know what I found, and I'll see if they have any coolant for this. If not, I'll run to the store and grab some, uh, or see if they just wanna top it off in the morning. Well, now we're just waiting on the customer to show up so we can give them the invoice and get paid for this job. Everything looks pretty good on the annual so far, but it's like 74 degrees, nice breeze. So I'm just going to sit out here in this good steer and wait.